the Somme, Flanders, Ypres, Pozier, and Gallipoli. Just some of the battlefields where New Zealanders served in World War I. Of a population of just over one million, we sent 103,000 young men and women to serve as nurses and soldiers overseas. 2,779 died at Gallipoli alone. The losses were greater in Western Europe. However, it is, it is Gallipoli that we commemorate for all of the battlefields and all of the courage that these men and women had serving overseas. Ladies and gentlemen, on the 25th of April, 1915, thousands of young men stepped onto a beach they would never leave. For eight months, they endured heat, flies, unburied bodies piled up, insufficient water and disease. Those were just the lucky ones that survived. From the start, they had it rough. Walter Ledley from the Canterbury Battalion wrote, At once, we were greeted with a terrible fusillade of rifle and machine gun fire, which was deadly. The man on my right was shot through the head and the chap on my left was shot through the stomach. I guess I was the lucky one today. We are meant to hate the enemy. The special thing about Gallipoli is the respect that developed between the Turkish and Anzacs. The trenches were so close to each other that both sides saw they were no longer shooting at distant figures, but men whose faces showed their feelings and emotions. The stench of rotting corpses became too much and were making people sick. So on the 24th of May, the Turkish and Anzacs ceased fire and worked together to bury the bodies of their friends and comrades. They talked, laughed, and for a few seconds, forgot that they were meant to be enemies from that day. They formed something of a connection to the point where they'd throw gifts back and forth between trenches. The Turkish would throw over rice, and in return, the Anzacs would throw over bully beef, which the Turkish would taste and then return. That respect they had was never lost. War is a wretched thing, and yet it can bring out the best in people. This battleground made everyone into heroes. And I do mean everyone. Hetor Tomataro. Bravery has many resting places. We all assume that the only heroes are the ones that have medals or were famous for doing something courageous. Don't forget the ordinary man. He was also courageous. He also put his life on the line every day. My great-grandfather, Nigel Heslop, was a water finder at Gallipoli. This was an, an incredibly important job. With the heat and heavy uniforms, water was crucial. My great-grandfather saved many men from dying of dehydration. Therefore, to me, he is a hero. He didn't talk much after the war, but our family knew he had done something heroic for those men, as many other soldiers would have also done something heroic for their comrades. He wasn't wounded, but if he was, I would like to think he'd be looked after, like so many others, by women such as Matron Brooks and Nurse Margaret Rogers on the Mahino. This was a hospital ship sent from New Zealand to Gallipoli. These women worked up to 60-hour shifts, and although it was never bombed, often stray bullets hit the ship. They were also courageous. 
These men and women don't have names in history books. They're remembered by their families. Some wouldn't even know jobs like theirs existed. And yet, they have more courage, willingness, and determination than anyone I know. They are heroes. Gallipoli, it forced ordinary men to face the extraordinary. It killed 130,000 young men, formed a respect between the Turkish and Anzacs, and made heroes out of New Zealanders. Gallipoli was a military disaster for Allied forces, and yet the battlefield we remember, with a public holiday, remembrance service, and a national consciousness, is Gallipoli. There is a quote from the father of modern Turkey. Ataturk said, you, the mothers who sent their sons from faraway countries, wipe away your tears. Your sons are now lying in our bosom and are at peace. After having lost their life on this land, they have become our sons as well. So now, New Zealand women and men go to Gallipoli and stand where once New Zealanders fought. We stand and we remember with the Turkish for the men who did not come home. Over a century ago, more than 10% of New Zealand's population left their homes and went to Egypt, Belgium, Turkey and France. They were willing to sacrifice their lives. We all may have different definitions of what a hero is, but we cannot deny them this. They were, they are, they will always be heroes of our nation.